So I'm with Rick Gott. Talk about the trends in general in the uh, internet industry. I, I guess that is an industry now, the internet industry. Um, but it, it seems like now there's lots of tools that people have at their disposal for free. And um, they can become a, a movie producer now and just make local videos. So that's kind of what I want to talk about on this segment. Uh, Rick, tell me about the trends going on with the internet and video, particularly with five second movies and, and, and web series. It's very much an industry. In fact, it's becoming the industry. I think in Hollywood they talk about that all the time. Like, you know, are you in the industry? And in days past, that's been films, movies, uh, television. And right now, it's becoming all of those things. I think that, uh, you know, Hollywood will always be for the mega blockbuster and all those big projects. But more and more, it's becoming smaller projects. This is the new wave of independent film and where it's going and especially with web series. Web series are uh, a growing industry. When LA Web Fest, which was started by Michael Ajakwi, began four years ago, he had about 50 titles gathered together, uh, producers who have created titles, gathered together in a small theater in LA and uh, have a little web fest, and that was called the LA Web Fest. It is the premier web fest, the first one that anyone thought of to have. Um, Michael is a pioneer. A man named Jean Aubert uh, started something called Marseille Web Fest in, in France, and 10 of the titles from the American LA Web Fest went over there. We hope to be one this year. Uh, and in, L in Marseille, it was the first year where the Cannes Film Festival allowed web series winners from Marseille Web Fest to be mentioned at the Cannes Film Festival. It was announced. So the baby's growing up. Uh, this is becoming huge. This year, we are noticing as we apply to LA Web Fest again, we're about to do that, um, all of the titles are from all over the world. It's, it's an international explosion of, of ways that people are getting to kill a little time, have a laugh. There are comedies, there are uh, dramas, there are sci-fi categories, there are uh, you know documentary style, uh, real life, what are those called, reality television kind of style things. Every single genre you, you can think of is represented at these web fests, uh, LA Web Fest and Marseille. And so it's busting wide open. We have a couple here in town. One is called Set the Table. Deborah Adair is the producer of it. She's a local woman, uh, an actress here, um, that has gathered a lot of people together. And she's been chosen as an entry uh, person for LA Web Fest this year. Good for her. Uh, it's huge, and it's growing uh, month to month, uh, year to year. So my dream is to actually take it to the next level and make it an industry. I dream of uh, what I call a studio without walls, called Indie Episodic here in Sacramento, making web series. We have at least three titles. I have Dark Pool, there's a show called Pharaohs that is going to be written by my wife, Karen Pollard. Um, let's just say it's a new kind of vampire. Uh, no blood is involved, but it's really cool. They feed. And uh, I have an idea for something called Why Aren't You Famous, which focuses on the original music scene. Uh, getting bands and uh, singer-songwriters, in, in particular, um, into the, uh, the mainstream. Featuring them and hopefully making them famous. So we have three titles right off the bat and others are coming in. What we envision is much bigger than Dark Pool. It's a chance to create a real industry here, real well-paying jobs. And I want to thank uh, Angelique Ashby, who is District 1 Council Member and also our Vice Mayor of Sacramento for being supportive. You'll see Angelique in episode three, step over Jim Kroll's uh, sleeping body. Uh, that's her. And uh, she's been very supportive and would love to see this happen for our town. Because, well, as you might say, jobs, jobs, jobs. Right? Rick, what can you tell me about five second videos or five second movies. <laughs> well, this is a great example. I have no uh, you know, connection to these, but uh, I've been watching them. I do teach filmmaking, as I said, and my kids are turning me on to the, the newest and, and coolest things. And uh, they said there's something called, a website called Five Second Movies, and uh, or Five Second Films, I believe. And uh, I went on, saw a couple. They're darling. Uh, they are five seconds long. The only criteria is that's how long they have to be. 
can you tell a story, do the arc in five seconds or less? And I think that's an example of where the industry's going. We want, pe people in LA, when I sat on the, uh, the, the, uh, the panels that down there, um, I was on this side of the table and the producers of web series were on the other, asking me, how long do web series tend to last? And how long do you think episodes will last? Um, I realized I, you know, I have kind of a unique opportunity to be a pioneer in this. I think that um, the answer now would be any length possible. There will be a day when you'll want to sit down because Samsung has already come out with smart TV. Every other television will be programmed to have the web completely connected to it. So you'll be watching your computer on the, the, the television screen. And so you'll sit for 30 minutes. You can watch a 40 minute episode. It'll be HBO. It'll also be a five second movie. Everything in between. So that whole dynamic of how long something is and that rhythm of watching eight minutes and then getting eight minutes of commercial. Oh, it's more like watching two minutes of the show and eight minutes of commercial. Um, that's going to go away. And they're going to be an amazing uh, variety of different ways that you can do new media. And we want to be part of it. To what degree do you think that um, inexpensive cameras and technology is, is helping improve the whole web video industry? <laughs> Boom! I just say that. Um, I teach filmmaking and I teach everything from the 8th grader up to the 12th grader. And I've noticed over the last 8 years that I've been uh, teaching that kids come on in already knowing how to do the nuts and bolts part. I teach them content, I teach them story structure, but they already know how to edit. They know how to shoot pretty well. They don't know the names of their shots. They don't know how to do a, a storyboard. There's a thousand things that I can bring to them, but they're already well ahead. And if that makes sense to you, then you know that um, where it's going to go is through the roof. Cameras are getting cheaper and cheaper. I bought a camera a while, only a couple of months ago, and I went into a certain store, and I noticed it was $200 cheaper in a couple of months. And that there was a $300 camera that was equal to it in terms of quality of, of visual. It just didn't have all the extra goo gaws on it. But as far as the, the cameras are going, they're getting cheaper and cheaper, and anybody can make a movie. And we all know that, right? But can you make a good one? Can you tell a story? And when I was in LA, I had uh, major people. I sat on panels with uh, professors from UCLA and Chapman University and the like, and that's all they hammered on. Story, story, story. It's the oldest problem of uh, our industry there is, and it's still the case. Are you going to grab someone's attention? Are you going to keep that attention? And are you going to satisfy them with something at the end that makes them go, oh man, I'm glad I saw it. Rick, thank you very much for this conversation. It was a pleasure.